Hi everybody, my name is Katie. This is episode number 11 of the Creating Christmas Island series. Today I want to introduce you to Pipsy and Felix. These are the two new profiles I created to be Christmas elves for my Christmas Island. Today I'm going to show you speed builds of how I decorated the inside of their houses. We're going to start with Pipsy first. Let's head on in. Pipsy's house has been decorated almost entirely with red and pink, and I've coordinated that with brown tones and kind of a creamy off-white tone. I wanted her house to be cute and whimsical and very girly. I also imagine that Pipsy loves music, so I add musical instruments into the room as well. As I'm creating this space, I was really inspired by my childhood. I grew up with three sisters and there was always a lot of music in our home and I really have a lot of beautiful Christmas memories of playing and singing music with my family. For that, I wanted to create this girly space in honor of those memories that I have. I imagine that Pipsy is the musical little elf that represents the girl that I was as a child. I was also inspired by the beautiful pink Christmas tree. This is the large festive tree DIY item that you can get in the game during December. I was customizing trees for the outside of my island and I found this pink one. I have to tell you, I was actually inspired to create these two elf characters because of this tree. I saw the pink tree and I thought it was yummy. I think it looks like cotton candy and sugar, and I really wanted to use it, but it doesn't match very well with the red and green classic traditional look of the rest of my island. So I decided I needed to create a character that would want a pink tree. And then I figure if I'm going to create a little cutesy girl pink elf character, then I might as well create a little blue boy and just be stereotypical. So that is how the inspiration for these two characters came to be. I decided to mirror their houses a little bit, but they're not entirely the same. I have upgraded Pipsy's house to one additional level so that her bedroom could be on the side and then Felix's bedroom could be in the back with the smaller size house, but I only wanted to decorate two rooms for each of them. So I've used that bookshelf in the back wall and I've blocked that additional door. It's a good way to remember if you want the look to be different on the outside of the house or you want the rooms to be organized differently, you can always upgrade the house but block one of those doors off. I've also done this before using simple panels and it works really well so that you have a little more control over the space that you're creating. If you haven't seen any of my interior design speed builds before, I will just explain really quickly the four steps that I use when I'm decorating a space. The first thing I do is figure out the wall and the floor. I like for them to coordinate and they oftentimes bring a lot of the kind of the style, color, and theme to a room. The second thing I do is add all the furniture, the big pieces of furniture that are going to go in. The third step is what I call a clutter step. And that's when I go through and do all the little bitty things that sit on top of other surfaces. And then the last step, which you just watched, where I do everything that hangs up on a wall. And that allows me to really complete the look of any space. You can watch me do all four of those steps here in the bedroom. I start with that really cutesy wall. I figure out a floor that matches, drop in the furniture, and then when we get around to that cluttered stage, I'll tell you a little bit more about the items that I put down. I found this really beautiful kimono stand. It has a whimsical pink pattern to it, and I've never been able to use it in a build before. And I thought it would be a really good headboard to this bed that I'm putting in here. It doesn't fit perfectly, but from certain angles, it certainly goes a long way to adding the character that I wanted in the room. It's not something I had seen used before, so I decided it would be fun to experiment in this little house here for my elf. I felt as if I could get away with things that were just a little bit more silly because of the characters that I were using for these two elves. 
As I'm dropping down the last couple items, you'll see now I'm starting that clutter stage. And as I'm putting down some of the items here, I've got uh, lamps, of course, or just furniture, but I'm putting down a couple mom items. I start by putting down an alarm clock in the corner and decide that that red is just a little bit too sharp. And so I switch over to what's called a pin stand. If you weren't aware, the mom's items, such as the pin stand and that rose art piece that I just hang, can all be customized to the multiple patterns that are available. Here is how her final house comes out. You'll see I've used that bird cage and customized it to be pink. You can hear that little bird tweeting when you're in the space, so that's a really effective object to have. You'll also see the art and the embroidery. Again, mom's items that you can get in the game, as well as that rug that's by the sink. We'll pop into the room real quick. And here you can see how the final bedroom came together. As I was evaluating this, I decided that the harsh brown of the clock on the wall was probably just a, a little bit too striking. And so that is something I will probably change out later. I do expect to go through and edit all of the different spaces in my town once all of the Christmas update is fully live and active. All right, let's go visit Felix and see how his house came together. For Felix's house, I went about the very similar style, certainly similar structure, and I created his house using the floor that's just like Pipsy's, but with a little bit more blue striped through it. His color scheme, very obviously, is going to be multiple shades of blue. And I used the same white, light white, and cream brown color tones as I did with Pipsy's house. So again, they're similar, but not quite the same. I imagine that Felix is a very playful elf and I wanted to put together a space where I imagined this silly little elf who worked hard all day making toys would come home and have a space of his own. And so there are a lot of different styles of furniture in his room. I have the rattan low table, the cute sofa, there's the diner brown table, the antique console table, the really modern looking system kitchen, such a variety of different things. I know that the homeowner association reward that we see on Sundays will tell you to use all matching furniture and that is great but once you're done getting the points from that I say go with what is going to best represent the look that you are trying to achieve. It's okay to do things your way and that's a big part of what makes Animal Crossing unique is the ability to create a space that is just yours. As I was finishing up this fourth step with the walls in here, I move on into his bedroom. I really wanted to use the imperial bed for Felix. It's kind of a fancy bed, so I know it may not seem like it fits, but I just felt like the fact that it was so big was kind of perfect. Like it was the bed that Felix was going to get to be fancy and festive and jump on all day long. And because it worked for my view of Felix, then it works. That's all that matters. You'll see I'm doing the bathroom in the bedroom again. I do have to separate it a little bit differently than I typically do for rooms on the side, but I like doing a segregated bathroom within the bedroom space. In fact, I do it so often I might need to change up my style a little bit because I'm in a bit of a rut, but it's because it works at really dividing the space up so that the room doesn't look quite so square and quite so big. So I, I do prefer having something to create a movement of space and having a little bathroom seems really useful and absolutely like the kind of thing that we would see if we were in a house. I play around with different rugs, but finally settle on the round rug. And then here I add a few of those clutter items. The mom's cushion is another item I used. It wasn't until I was done that I realized how many of the mom's items I utilized in the build for these two elves. And I think it's because the items are very homey. Here is how his final house comes together. You'll see it has just enough of an eclectic style to be very playful, a little bit silly. And you can see that big festive tree DIY again. Of course, his is 
blue. All of the customizations for that tree look gorgeous. The snowflake on the wall is a tapestry item in the game. I do recommend finding it if you can. His room is pretty basic, not too over the top, but somehow just perfectly what I was going for for this little blue elf. I also really enjoyed putting clothes on these two little characters. There aren't any elf clothes in the game, so I had to make do with what I had. Instead of an elf hat, they are actually wearing the night cap, one in pink and one in blue, and I think it worked really well. Then they are wearing the alpinist overalls, and I put them in jester shoes. I wish that the jester shoes were all one color instead of having the multiple tones, but they're the only ones I could find that really came to a point in the way that I was looking for to have an elf look in my game. Here you can see the two of them in front of their houses. I hope you found something useful here and that you continue creating in this game. Until next time, have the best Animal Crossing day. <laughs>